Fry's rearrangement. Very, very interesting it is. Actually, first sodium phenoxide when treated with CH3COCl. This is acetylation. You can go for in the presence of pyridine. Acetyl chloride with ONA gives phenyl acetate. O C O C H 3. Phenyl acetate is formed. Once after formation of this kind of phenyl acetate, this group will be migrated to either ortho or para position. The group will be converted to ortho or para position. This can be obtained even from phenol by using acetic anhydride also. If you are using concentrated sulfuric acids to remove the water molecule, you will be getting here same product OCOCH3. Phenyl acetate only, you will be getting as well as CH3COH. This is not Fry's rearrangement. Now we are going for the Fry's rearrangement. The phenyl esters on treatment with anhydrous AlCl3 in the presence of CS2 as solvent. Okay. So here you see this is OCOCH3. When you are taking anhydrous AlCl3 conditions, you remember very well in the presence of CS2 as solvent. When you are using CS2 solvent and HCl3, it undergoes the reaction called Fry's rearrangement. Now, this will become OH here, COCH3. Either ortho position or you can expect it para position also, COCH3. So, you can say ortho hydroxy estophenol or para hydroxy estophenol. Ortho, this is para hydroxy acetophenol. This migration of this group COCS3 either to ortho position or para position is known as Fry's rearrangement. Okay. Now. Estyl group, even you can expect the benzyl group also. Benzyl group also will move to either ortho position or para position. This reaction is Fry's rearrangement. Okay, now phenyl estate changes to orthohydroxyestophenol. In the presence of anhydrous AlCl3 and CS2, the reaction is known as Fry's rearrangement. Okay, now 